Hello, this is Jasa Mutlak from the Case Stars Project, and today uh, I will uh, illustrate in this tutorial how to use Case Stars Ecos Astrophotography tool to perform common astrophotography tasks. And so uh, I'll give all the details as we go on because this is a real session. Okay, so we go to the Tools menu and we click on Ecos and we select our devices. Uh, for this session here, my telescope is uh, the Orion uh, uh, Aeon 120mm with the EQG series mount. And I'm going to use EQ mod driver for that to drive it. I could use also SynScan, but uh, I prefer EQ mod because it has a lot of features. My CCD is QSI 583 CCD. So I'm going to select this as my primary camera. And uh, for the guider, I have Lodestar as uh, the guide CCD. Uh, for the filter wheel, it's already integrated into the CCD, so there is no need to specify it here. And finally, the focuser is the Moonlight focuser driver. So uh, let's go ahead and start ND now. And we had uh, the ND control panel pop up with all the four devices. No need to change any settings, let's just connect them all. and it seems that everything has connected successfully. That's pretty good. Okay, uh, well, if you look at case stars right now, we see that the uh, EQ mod is pointing roughly toward Polaris, and this is the only thing you have to do. You have to point your mount toward the north, if you're the northern hemisphere, and then you can use uh, case stars to do the rest. So this is the CCD module, and this is we use to capture devices either in preview mode or in a sequence queue. Uh, this is the focus modulo, which is will be the first thing we will do today. And we can do either manual or auto focusing using the V curve uh, with the HFR method, which is the half flex radius. And uh, this is the uh, guiding model to do auto guiding. And this is the recent addition to ECUS. This is the alignment module which allows us to do uh, plate solving solutions using astrometry.net and this uh, give us really a sub arc second accuracy in our go-tos and uh, so so now we will try to do the focus first but then we need to find a star like a, a, a fourth magnitude star would be perfect so because uh, we don't want to saturate the image so let's select something nearby. Okay, so let's look. What do we have here? Okay, so that's that's a perfect. That's 3.3. .3. Okay, so let's tell the mount to track it. So it will slow there and track it. And of course, it's not going to go there perfectly because it's not aligned yet. There are no alignment points. Uh, it's just connected directly to my laptop through the EQ Direct uh, cable. Okay, so the telescope is there. <clears throat> Let's go ahead now and uh, select our CCD. Let's put the exposure one second, pinning four by four, and start framing. And what this framing does is just it's it's uh, taking continuous exposures, and it's measuring the HFR as, as well. Okay, there we go. I think that's the star. Yep. Uh, all right, so we have it here, and. Uh, I think we can, we can, even though it's really severely out of focus, we can still use the autofocus algorithm to, to get it focused. Okay, so to do the autofocusing, it's very simple. We just select auto and we select the autofocus options. So the first one is uh, we're going to let Eco select the star itself and we want Kikos to subframe it so that the download rates are faster. The rest of the settings uh, we don't really have to, to change. Okay, so now it's starting the focusing and it will build the V-curve as we go on. Okay, there we go. So now this is this is the subframe around the star, the focus star. So we got 6.48 and it's focusing inward and it's now subplotting some points. Okay, 5.7, that's an imp improvement. 3.5. Now we're getting somewhere. You can't see the curve, the shape of the V curve starting to appear. 
Okay, 2.2. Okay, we're really getting close to the optimal point now. And we can see the image is saturated a bit, so um, I'm going to reduce the exposure value. So even though this is a 3.3 magnitude star, it's still going to get saturated because we're using 4x4 four four binning here. Okay, so it's still going down. Okay, well now it's uh, it's on the other side of the V curve, so now it has to go back and find the optimal point. Okay, 0.75, that's that's an improvement now. 0.63, and for me it's around usually 0.5 something. That's the perfect focusing point. Okay, all right, there we go. We achieved focus now. The autofocus process is complete. And, uh, and with that out of the way, so this is one of the common task focusing, so this is the first thing I usually do. All right, so with that out of the way, uh, we can do some alignment now. So we go there and uh, we have two things. We have go to and we have poro alignment modes. For the poro alignment mode, it allows you to measure the uh, poro alignment errors, which are, we're not really gonna talk about this now in this tutorial. The other mode, which is the go to mode, uh, allows us to uh, solve for a solution and then what we're going to do we're going to select slew to target so what happens is that it should uh, slew to target whenever it finds a solution and here are the options for the plate solving and the RA and deck values are the search area that we want to limit the solver to look for in the sky and uh, so let's start let's go ahead and, and solve the image because the search area is already uh, synced from the last track we did, the first track actually. And we noticed from the focusing that the star was was, was uh, off center, so now it should be in, dead in the center. Okay, so uh, it took only nine seconds. Let's go check in the CCD. Let's just verify that we have a star right in the center. All right, there we go. That's that's pretty center. Okay, great. So, um, and also, the focusing is pretty good. That looks pretty focused. All the stars are nice round stars. Okay. So that's nice. That's that's the first alignment point added to the model. So EQ mod. If you go to the line tab, we see it uses N star alignment mode by default. And every time you perform a sync, every time you solve and then ECOS performs a sync, it adds a point to the model and it builds it. And the more points we have, the more accurate it gets. And really, you really don't have to touch any of these things. It's done transparently for you. Great. So now we're done with the focusing and uh, with alignment. So uh, let's select some targets. So let's go to the observational planner and uh, let's see. So we have NGC 281 and, um, okay, here we go, the Monkey Head Nebula. Okay, that's a that's a good target for today. Well, it's it's now about 73 degrees in altitude, which is fine. So let's just go, let's go to it. Okay, so just right click and click on scope and it should go to it. And uh, today is not really an excellent observation day, uh, I mean, uh, I'm observing from the roof of my house uh, and it's in a very light, a very, very heavy polluted uh, area, light pollution, and also it's almost full moon today. So, uh, so I'm not expecting spectacular results here, but this is just a, a tutorial on how to use ECOS. Okay, so, all right, the, the mount is almost there. And so what I usually do after this is I, I go uh, to the alignment tab and I uh, capture and solve again. And that will just add another uh, sync point to the model. But it also makes sure that my target is center again. Because every time we do this, it's loose to the target. Okay, so the solver started now. It should finish soon. Okay. 
10 seconds that's that's really good so now let's uh, let's try to let's change the filter to H alpha because uh, we're looking at the nebula and let's take um, 15 second exposure and let's look let's just make sure that the, our object is in the frame So now have, we now have two sync points added to the model. And now it's the image is downloaded. So, okay. So we can't see anything. Let's auto stretch that. Okay. There we go. Uh, that that's, doesn't look spectacular, but uh, this is mostly auto stretch artifacts. But okay. Well, we have the object in here. So, so now we have the object in there. Let's start to do the guiding process. So the first thing is calibration. We have to calibrate it. And we use the guider, of course, the load star. And here we specify the guider commands uh, come out of what device? And it's coming out of the load star because this is where I hook the cable from the load star to, uh, to the mount. And here I select filters to enhance the image. I'm just going to use high contrast. So I'm selecting the pulse to be 1500 because that's what I usually do in my mount. And uh, oh, the image looks kind of weird. Okay, I think I need to pin it two by two. This is what I usually do for Lodestar. So let's do that. Okay, so setting the pinning two by two. And uh, let's capture again. All right. So let's just select any of these stars. And for for guiding, we we don't really expecting you know pretty images. Uh, any any star would suffice. So starting now the calibration procedure, and what it does, it just it moves the mount in right ascension and then declination, uh, just to calculate some parameters, including the orientation. So this should take a few more seconds until uh, it's complete. Okay, so we're done. And now we're ready to uh, start auto guiding. And you notice here we have a, a dither option. This is set to 2.5 pixels. And so let's start the auto guiding now. And so what that does is that um, it will move the uh, guide star randomly uh, for 2.5 pixels, I mean randomly in any random direction for 2.5 pixels after each subsequent uh, exposure. And that's really good to get rid of the CCD, uh, some CCD artifacts like uh, hot pixels and things like that when we're doing image stacking. Okay, and here we see the drift graphics. So the green is uh, the deviation and right ascension from the guide star and the blue is the declination here see some parameters and you can find those details in the uh, India website documentation all the options and what they do okay so um, now that the guiding is uh, working so just getting the name of that object, NGC, 2174. So we're going to select the type and filter. So the type is like the type of the frame, light or flat or whatever. And the filter, what kind of filter we're using for it. We don't need the nicer stamp and we don't want it to be displayed in the fits viewer. So we're going to take a five minute exposure, 300 seconds, pinning one by one and we're gonna take five frames so that's that looks fine and then we're gonna add that to the sequence queue and let's just check over the parameters to make sure we're done all right okay and I'm gonna do the same but I'll change the filters to R then G green and then blue and this is something very common that people that folks do all the time okay and here is a very neat feature maximum guiding deviation and I set it to three arc seconds. So it watches the guiding deviations that we just saw. And if it exceeds a certain value, here is three arc seconds, it will automatically abort the exposure. 
and it will also automatically resume exposure after the guiding deviation is uh, less than that value. Wow, and we see um, a spike here. Okay, but it got back to the position, fine. Okay, we're ready to start our exposure, so let's do that. So we go to start sequence, and there we go, it started. And of course, I'm not going to sit through the whole five minutes here. Okay, so we're back and it's almost done exposing. One second left now. Downloading the image. It takes 20 seconds for QSI to download the, the image. Okay, we got the image and now it's supposed to die there, the guide star, so it will move it a bit around in a random direction for 2.5 pixels then it will capture the next frame there we go and now the, the next frame is captured so let's take a look at what we just captured so yeah this is the NGC file arch alpha let's load that and let's take a look and wow the effects of the light pollution and the moon are very evident in this frame Okay, but there we go. We have uh, the monkey head nebula captured in here. And uh, this is just a typical astrophotography session. And I'm just, I am just showed how we can use ECOS features to uh, achieve that. So I hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial, this tutorial on ECOS. And uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Leave it in the comments below. Cheers.